And it seems to me as if you, if you remain a believer, a Muslim believer, that it becomes very hard to argue with the concept of God or to argue with the moral guide of Islam. I mean, the two gentlemen but, but, sitting here tonight demonstrate that. The Quran is forever perfect. Everybody else has misunderstood it. Those of us who criticize Imagine, it have misunderstood yeah, it. Those who act according to the violent passages have misunderstood it. And if you become but, but, an atheist, but, 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 then you can do in, that uh, without flinching. The one thing that the Bible isn't, that some people seem to think it is, it's not a biology textbook. It's not an astronomy textbook. The first, the first chapter of Genesis, the first couple of chapters of Genesis are uh, the 6th century BC version of how the world might have started. We've improved on that since. I don't believe that those are God's words. Those are the words of men trying to make the most sense that they could out of, out of the information they had at the time. You don't buy Adam and Eve either. No, I don't buy Adam and Eve either. Uh, but uh, it's undoubtedly a legend which has some significance, but it's not historical. What about the life of Christ? Well, Jesus. Well, this of course is in historic times. It's at the time when the when the uh, Roman Empire was at its height. And the thing about it is that all the only information we have about the life of of Jesus is in the Gospels, in the New Testament Gospels. There's no reference to him in any literature outside. There's one dubious paragraph in the histories of Josephus, which may have is that been... right? There's no reference to Jesus other than Matthew, Mark, Luke, John? And, of course, in, in, in the rest of the Bible, the, the, epistle, yeah, right. the epistles of Paul, Acts of the right, Apostles. Right, right. But outside the sacred writings, absolutely no mention. No historian who was not... Who, who, was, not, who, who was not a Christian, let's yeah. put it that way. Not in Bethlehem. No one left any writings of any kind. None. None. This doesn't mean that he didn't exist. The chances are he did. There were many people at the time who were, what should we say, messianic, mm -hmm. uh, who were believed to be messiahs by one group or another. And uh, Jesus survived in the, as a messiah. Incredible impact for someone who got such little notice at the time from historians, right? Well, that's true, but uh, that's, the way, that's the way sometimes it works out. Uh, when, when Mohammed also received little notice outside of Arabia. And uh, I dare say many founders of great religions were dismissed by people of the time, except those who believed in them as just one more kook. When yeah. someone's arguing with me that the Earth is 5,000 years old, <laughs> yes, I'm smiling. Yeah, of course I'm smiling. You know, the, the, the fundamentalist view uh, of the, uh, you know, the creation of the Earth is rather like an episode of the Flintstones. Mm -hmm. So I, I, have, I have to laugh. Those sort of how, does your, how does your atheism, which you're passionate about, mm. how does that play with your American audience, given that so many people in America are God-fearing people uh, and probably take exception to it? Um, well, but they shouldn't. We talked about this last time. Why, why should they take offence that I don't believe in their God or any other God? And I'd say to them, you know, tell me the reasons why you don't believe in all the other gods, and that's the reason I don't believe in yours. And I, I've got nothing against people believing in God at all, you know. Um, uh, in fact, if, if it, you know, did make you a kinder person, if you only did good things in his name, mm -hmm. then great, you know, but there's the rub. Uh, it's when uh, I see some of these religious fundamentalists saying that um, they've told their five-year-old children that if they turn out gay, they will burn in hell. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is child abuse. That's nothing to do with religion or spirituality. That's child abuse. So... That's why I'm passionate when it comes to that. What do you think that. of the... No, no, it, it, no, America's fantastic. It is the land of opportunity. And, um, uh, and um, th there's, there's, you know, bits of both cultures that I, I love and hate. And, um, uh, and the wonderful thing about being between uh, England and America, they are both land of freedom. And criticise them all you want, but know that you're in a place that allows you to criticise it. Mm. And, that's, and that's lucky. You know, and, and that's great, and that should be cherished. And freedom of speech for me is, is one of the most important things that, that you know, discovered. Mm. Uh, and uh, I'll fight for the right of it. And, and even though I don't believe in God, and I don't believe, you know, unlike most religions, I treat all religions the same. Mm. I, I think they're all um, wrong, not morally wrong, but I don't think there, there is or could be a, a God. But if someone said, we're banning religion, I'd march to not have it banned, because it's your right to believe what you want, mm. um, and it's your right to be wrong. Mm. 
and I'll fight for that right. If the God of the Bible exists, and the Bible is an accurate representation of this God's character, and we will get to probably more of this on Sunday, um, and I knew for certain that this God existed, I don't care whether that's possible or not, let's just say I knew for certain, I would no longer be an atheist because I would still, I would believe that the God exists, but I would not worship that God. I find, first of all, I have a problem with the idea of why worship is needed or anything else, um, but if the Bible is an accurate model of that God's character, then I don't find, find him particularly attractive. But the fact that I absolutely know that he exists doesn't compel me to worship. At most, the argument you could make is to, to worship out of fear. Because um, God could squash me like a bug. I can't do anything about that. If there's a God, boom. Do whatever you want. I can't, can't do anything with that. But the kind of God that would do that and the kind of God that would punish someone for honestly and sincerely following the evidence where it led uh, is an immoral thug that I don't want anything to do with. And I don't, I don't you know, I would, if he sends me to hell, um, I would sit comfortably there knowing that I'm morally superior to the guy who sent me there. The God of the Bible hates sodomy and will kill you for it, but he rather enjoys the occasional human sacrifice. <laughs> but I think at the very least we can, we can say he doesn't quite have his priorities straight. In the Old Testament, we witness the most immoral behavior imaginable. Genocide, ethnic cleansing, sexual slavery, the murder of children, kidnapping, all of it not only permitted by God, but mandated by God. I mean, if you doubt this, take another look at books like Exodus and Leviticus and Deuteronomy and 2 Samuel and Numbers and First and Second Kings and Zechariah. I mean, these books, on these bo in these books, the, the most unethical behavior is celebrated. If, 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 if these events occurred in our own time, half the prophets and kings of Israel would be shackled and brought to the Hague for crimes against humanity including Moses for slaughtering the Midianites, including Joshua for slaughtering the Amalekites, including Elijah for slaughtering the, pro the prophets of Baal. I mean, these men, by, by our standards today, they were utter psychopaths. This reflects something he said on his website earlier. In a similar context, he said, suppose God is more like the cosmic artist who wants to splash his canvas with the extravagance of design, who wants to enjoy, who enjoys creating this fabulous cosmos designed fantastic, fantastic detail for observers. So what this attitude is saying is that, well, my, my point is that this is not some sort of sophisticated apologetic strategy. This is an admission of defeat. This is saying we should never expect theism to explain why the universe is one way rather than some other way. You know God. God is an artist. You know artists. They're kind of quirky and unpredictable. We can't expect to know what they're going to do ahead of time. Anything you might possibly observe about the universe, according to this view, I can explain as saying that is what God would have done. In Naturalism, on the other hand, you need to play by the rules. When we say in cosmology or physics that a certain parameter is finely tuned, it's not just the parameter looks funny to us, it's that we have a prior set of expectations for what values the parameter should take on, and the parameter doesn't fit those expectations. So we look for physical models that explain it, and that drive to understand things better helps us understand physics better, helps us understand the real world better. So unlike God, who is an artist and can't be predicted, nature is not an artist. Nature plays by the rules. Nature makes predictions. Nature provides explanations. Thank you. Islam makes very large claims for itself. Very large claims indeed. It claims to be the last and final religion. The last and final revelation. When you see bumper stickers, everyone says you can't reduce major things to a bumper sticker. It's not my idea to have bumper stickers saying Islam is the solution. It's a well-known slogan actually of parties associated with the Muslim Brotherhood. They say Islam is the solution for everything. It takes care of all your life and the one to come. Sexuality, political economy, banking, diet, relations with other religions, everything. It's a total solution. What is creepy about the word total? I hope I don't have to tell an audience like this. It's the first five letters of the word totalitarian. 
It's absolute. It's absolute. It's all-inclusive. It's, it's unanswerable. And oddly, for a religion that makes such large claims, notice another thing about Islam, it doesn't particularly like having these claims questioned or scrutinized. In other words, this, as there, just as there is with all religions, an inverse relationship between the claims they make and the evidence they can produce for them, you must have noticed that, with Islam, a younger religion, and perhaps therefore more in its first flush, there's an extraordinarily strong willingness to say that any challenge to its absolutist claims is by definition profane. And profanity and blasphemy can be the antecedent to very severe punishment, and often are, for Muslims and for non-Muslims. And this is not a road of peace, in my submission. It's an absurd situation we're in, where nothing that anyone does whilst being Muslim is any responsibility of Islam's. Yet anything anyone does whilst being a Christian or a Jew is responsibility of all Christians, all Jews. Let's make this as, 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 as straightforward as I can. Take the categorization that eminent scholars like Bernard Lewis, Ibn Warak have made. Let's say Islam is a very, very complex thing. Uh, and the best way I can do this in the very short time I have is say you have three Islams. Islam 1, 2, and 3. Islam 1, the Quran and the life of Muhammad uh, and the Hadith. Islam 2, the tradition of the Sharia. Islam 3, what Muslims do now. The first of those things, Islam, the Quran, and so on, is bad. It is bad. There is a lot of violence in it. And what's worse, the peaceful verses are superseded by the violent verses. The violent verses also, sadly, are more numerous in number. Then you've got the life of Muhammad. Again, a bad man, a very bad man, it has to be said. Not a great role model, if you look at it. Uh, it takes child brides, abuses a small girl, uh, multiple wives, uh, himself a warrior, himself a war criminal, himself beheads uh, uh, Jews. Uh, this, I would have thought, would be a signal of not great peacefulness. Um, <laughs> Then you've got the tradition of the uh, Sharia. Again, not great peacefulness. Still, no schools of Sharia that people in this hall would want to submit to. And thirdly, what Muslims do now, thankfully, there is some hope in that one. Because most Muslims, thank goodness, I almost said thank God, but uh, <laughs> old habits die hard. Um, uh, most Muslims don't do what those texts say. Um, because they exercise their judgment as moral beings without having to refer to defunct holy books. Now look, I wish that uh, Zebra and Majid uh, were the spokespeople of Islam. It would be lovely, although in Majid's case it would have taken rather too long if everyone had to go for 14 years preaching the downfall of America and then said no, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we, we'll, we are where we are. Uh, anyhow, I wish they spoke for Islam. It would be great. Uh, but the fact is that tonight, the organizers of this debate asked a number of clerics, none of them would show. Specifically, they wouldn't show and debate against Ayan Hirsi Ali. Uh, myself, I don't think they cared. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but no, it's very interesting that. They will not debate time and again. Muslim, the actual leaders of your religion will not debate this. And you're left with people like we have here. The reason why is, of course, is that the leaders of the religion show such terrible, uh, uh, terrible lessons. Uh, it is not a small thing. It's not as it were a detail. It's not like a wacky Florida pastor that you've got the largest Sunni state of Saudi Arabia, the most important Sunni state in the world, the most extraordinary closed prison of a society. It's not, it's not a detail. It's not a, a one-off nut job that the Shiite Republic of Iran is what it is, led by the people it's led by. That is not an accident, it's not a detail. The thing that worries me is that although tonight we hear from the fellow panelists here about how Islam is a religion of peace, the fact is that the people who are making the decisions in the religion, the people who are preaching in the religion, the heads of that religion, people like Sheikh Haradawi who broadcasts anti-Semitic, the most appalling filth every week on the main networks. That is the, the, the faith that is speaking for you guys. I wish that, Zeba, you were on every uh, week on Al Jazeera, but you're not. Karadawi is. The problem is that Islam is an unstable component, as a religion, an unstable component. A thousand years ago, the Mutazilites tried to reform the religion. They were wiped out. The fact is that Islam is many things, many, many things. But to say it's a religion of peace is nonsense. It's to ignore reality. It's to ignore very difficult 
but necessary facts, not paradigms, but facts. To say that Islam is a religion of peace is to say something based entirely on hope. It's to elevate a hope into truth. And I hope, as you all know, history teaches us that's a very bad thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Smart. You go around the world and you find times and places where nations have excelled in one subject or another. There's a birth of that period of, of where they excel, and then there's a peak, and sometimes it drops off, and sometimes they hang on. And so you can ask the culture of that. What was going on in that nation to support those discoveries? And then what happened when they ended? And so I, I call that sort of naming rights. If you were there first and you did it best, you name things. Particle physics uh, in this country in the United States was like going gangbusters after the Second World War. And, and the discovery of atomic elements, look at the periodic table. There's Berkelium, Californium, you know, we got half the United States up there in the upper, heavier elements of the periodic table. Uh, am I right there? Sir, Sir Weinberg. Okay, I don't want to. <laughs> that's, that's not because the world liked California or Berkeley, it's because the work was done here. It's because there was a there was a, um, an effort to excel in just those subjects. And it shows up in other ways. Well, I'll give you just briefly. You know, um, part of the naming rights is that you don't have to name it. So, for example, while we didn't invent the Internet, we certainly exploited it here in America. We did that sort of first and best. And so your email address does not end in .us. Everybody else is in the world. they got to say what country they came from. We don't. Okay? <laughs> It's, it's simple, but it's, it's the consequence of being there first and doing it better than anyone had done it before. Do you know that the British postage stamp is the only postage stamp in the world that does not identify the country of origin? Because they invented postage stamps. So why should they have to say what country it is? It's their invention. Okay? Check them out. It's, a, it's, it's just the facts of this. The constellations of the night sky, we, it's the Greek and Roman, and it's lasted to this time because they did a really good job thinking that stuff up. All the mythologies of the heavens, that really stuck with us. All right, so I'm going to make a larger point, um, not to get gratuitous on you here, but September 11, 2001, uh, as we all know, this was going on. Uh, in New York City. Uh, this is the view outside of my window. I live four blocks from ground zero. Excuse me, this is the corner of the building in which I live. I went outside to get this view. I was at the time judging whether I should go collect my daughter, who was in an elementary school two blocks north of the North Tower. North is to the right in this picture. So I want to get a closer view with a highly magnified uh, zoom lens to see what, while that was happening, the plane flew into the South Tower. And so no one was thinking terrorism until the second one was hit. The first one was just sort of a bad tragedy. And so these are just three frames from my camcorder. This is at t equals zero. This is one second, well, like actually a fraction of a second. The plane was moving probably 500 miles an hour. And just to understand, the black building, that black sort of monolithic building, that is 50 stories tall. This is New York City, people. So tall buildings are kind of, they're just all over the place. And that's just a hotel, a 50-story hotel. And it's, the, the, the towers are foreshortened because they're the angle at which this is shown. I put these up because a few days after this, President Bush, I don't remember where he said this, on the steps of the White House, in the Rose Garden or at the Capitol, in an attempt to distinguish we from they, the terrorists who flew these planes into the buildings and into the, uh, uh, that went down in Pennsylvania and at, at, in Washington, to distinguish we from they, he loosely qu quotes, a phrase out of the Bible by saying, our God is the God who named the stars. Now, this is before I was on his Rolodex, okay? Uh, because I could have helped him out there. It's, it matters, however, that scripture, and this is not just the Quran, this is, also, this is most scripture, now, it matters that these texts are, ethically speaking, not the wisest books we have. It, and it matters that most human beings think they were dictated by the creator of the universe. I mean, it, you, you could improve the Quran and you could improve the Bible in five minutes to the benefit of everybody. 
and yet we can't rewrite these pages. So we're, we're stuck with we're figuring out how to convince billions of people to interpret them in the most benign way. But if, if, if every page of the Quran had on the bottom of it a little footnote saying, oh, by the way, you know, don't kill anyone for their beliefs, you know, don't, you know, and, and homosexuals just fine, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> and women are the equals of men, despite what I seem to have said in these other surahs, women are every bit the equals of men, um, we would live in a better world. Muslims would live in a better world. And it's hard, it, because the Quran doesn't say anything like that, and because the Quran gives you a very plausible rationale for viewing women as the property of men more than truly their equals, uh, Muslims are left trying to, to, to do some very acrobatic theology